My name is Rok Zalokar, I am an IFMJ guide instructor specialized in skiing and snow safety. In this series we would like to reveal some of the secrets that we IFMJ guides learned over on the field or our extensive time spent in the mountains. I'll be hosting uh, friends and experts and we'll talk about safety, we'll give you tips and tricks for the mountain activities and we'll recommend you gear based on our long days spent in the backcountry. In the first five videos we'll talk about uh, basics of ski touring, about snow safety, then on the third one we'll try to figure out how to pick up our backcountry skis. In the fourth we'll talk about the backcountry skiing, about the ascent and then the descent. We'll take you on our trip so you can come with us and explore mountain through, through our eyes, the way we see it. In this first series we'll go ski touring. It's the oldest form of skiing and one of the nicest activities to do in the mountains. We need a special set of boots, skis, bindings and skins that allows us to comfortably climb up to the point from where we'll ski down. For every ski day or a ski trip I have my personal checklist that I go through. And the first of all we need snow to ski on. So actually I'm gonna always check what's, uh, what's going on with the snow, with the webcams, that just, just that I get the rough picture. And uh, then I always check weather into details and avalanche report. I'm always really careful when there is avalanche report grade three Generally, that means there's going to be lots of snow, potentially really good skiing, but also we can find locally really, really dangerous uh, avalanche scenarios. So we have to be really careful when there is a great tree avalanche uh, danger spread out through the region. And that's actually the scenario that's going to happen now in a few days. So at the end, uh, I determine my, uh, I pinpoint my location uh, regarding the, the level of the group that I guide and uh, also on the final avalanche and weather report but I always keep plan B and C in my pocket so I can actually decide last minute just from the data that I gather over the day on the tour when I'm gonna end up. Make sure that you always know manually where, where you are on the mountain and never trust, trust your phone and your apps 100%. So yeah, I always keep this in my pocket. Hey, Mulc, but I smig, I see, no, I'm not going to say to the Switzer, to the Oh, that photo, I think I'm going to that's the way we started touring 30 years ago and these days there is easier way to do it. First we need to grab some gear. Clothing. Ascent will be the first part of the tour and therefore we need to dress smart to stay dry, warm and not sweat too much. We will always have to adjust clothing a bit but rule of a thumb is to keep an extra warm layer puffy in a backpack for safety. In the description below you will find a detailed checklist with links. Hi everyone, my name is Blush and I'm product manager at Elan. I'm in charge for the backcountry and freeride segment. So my job is taking care that great ideas and constructions from Elan reach the market. On the other hand, I'm a passionate skier and here I will share you my opinion on how to put up touring setup. So skis, boots and bindings create a whole package. First of all, you need to ask yourself if you will use this setup mostly for ski touring or as a one ski quiver uh, to cover all kinds of skiing, so ski touring or on piste or even free ride. If your answer is more than 50% ski touring, weight is one of the most critical factors when choosing the setup. Pin or tech bindings are the lightest binding technology on the market, so that's the biggest plus. On the other hand, especially the toe piste doesn't release as on the normal binding. So release and safety is the biggest concern here. Yeah, so we guides, we really like it because of certain brands that makes them mostly from 
Aluminium are really reliable and reliability is the key factor for us. When locked they will not release and getting over the no-fall zones, over exposed places, iced patches keeps our minds at ease. My rule of a thumb, less plastic or composite materials, less moving parts, more reliable. Keep it simple and stupid. Most of the brands are making uh, almost every BC boot with pin inserts these days, so you won't have trouble finding a pair. Regarding the skis, uh, width and uh, weight are the biggest factors for picking up a touring ski. For all around users, I recommend the skis uh, ski up to 90 mm under waist and it could be up to 10 cm shorter than your height. But always look for a ski that performs well on, in any kinds of snow and conditions. So choose your length and width accordingly. In case that you're looking for one ski that you will gonna use it on the slopes, free ride or ski touring, look for something in between 90 and 100 mm underfoot. If you tend to use it more for free ride, the width around 105 is the right decision. In powder or side touring, this is the most stable and fast platform to enjoy your days. Backcountry boots have a rubber sole, are lighter and have a walk mode that make them really comfy when walking uphill, climbing, boot packing. First, you need to decide if you will use a lightweight touring boot or just a slightly heavier, really well performing boot that does it all, even driving big fat free ride planks. Then go to a specialized shop and take your time. BC boots don't mold the same as racing, so to start with, find something that doesn't bite you all over the place. So with poles, we are looking for extendable sturdy poles that have also longer grip, because when climbing up, we will extend them a little bit more, but for skiing, we still need them to be sturdy. So two-piece works perfectly, a long grip will make our days more comfy when traversing or climbing up steeper sections. While climbing up, because of the steepness, a person holds poles lower down the handle. So skins are also a crucial part of a human-powered backcountry elevator. Use the one with any kind of glue, let it be on silicon base, hybrid technology, it doesn't matter. Make sure they're trimmed to your skis and fit perfectly. That will make your Ascent much more comfortable when you'll have a constant grip even when traversing on a harder snow. Read what manufacturer recommends, make sure you dry them away from the direct heat source and store them properly off season. In detail, we'll explain everything in upcoming video about the basics of ski touring ascent. Just like wearing the underwear, we need to have our Avalanche safety gear with us all the time. So Beacon is a device that no matter of a manufacturer transmits and receives the 457 kHz signal. When we are in the mountains, we have it in sand mode and it silently beeps all the time. In case someone gets buried, we turn it into search mode and look for the signal. Here we come to the second tool. So probe needs to be made of a metal and we need it to pinpoint the location of the bury so that we don't uh, lose time with unnecessary shoveling. When snow starts to move, it becomes an avalanche. And meanwhile, there is enormous energy stored in that slightly melts down the snow. And as soon as it settles in, it can become solid and shoveling is the longest of the three phases that we described. The fourth basic element of the avalanche safety gear is knowledge. And here I mean of every single person in the group. Make sure you attend one of the workshops where you will learn more about how to use the equipment, how to organize a rescue and how to read the snow, terrain and dangers and refresh that every season, year after year. And never forget that at the end of the day, even if you use the best equipment on the market, our own decision will make the difference between staying alive or not. Whoa. So we need to store all this gear in our packs. 
So backpack between 20 and 35 liters is what you can use every day. Even for the multi-day trips in the Alps where you will spend nights in a cozy hut with beds and food ready for you. On most of the touring days, I will use this 25 liter rough pack that has a separate accessible avalanche compartment in case that I will do a snow profile, dig a pit and store back my equipment, it will stay separate and keep other things dry in my pack. I love to have a pocket for my goggles easy accessible and have options to strap skis on it. I highly recommend a rough backpack made from a bit heavier material since the ski edges are sharp, will be skiing through the trees and if you take a fall it won't drip straight away. Get up and pull it. The other option is an uh, airbag system. So this is a jet force and this is its trigger mechanism. Uh, it allows you to stay on the surface in case of an avalanche and increases your survival chances. I mostly don't use it for ski touring when I can gather many information about snow stability while ascending, but when I'm free riding, when I use ski lifts, cat ski or helicopter, I cover way more ground, ski on different aspects and elevations of the mountains, and in this case I'll be using jet force for the most of the time. So now we have all the gear needed and it's time to have some fun. Backcountry skiing is one of the nicest activities to do in the mountains. Make sure before you head out that you have the knowledge, right gear and the right friends to go with. If you're just starting, I highly recommend taking a course with an IFMGA guide and we'll be more than happy to show you all the tricks that we learned over the years spent and surviving in the mountains. Don't forget to subscribe. In the description below you will find all the gear listed. Please share your thoughts with us, write down your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Remember, unless you have an extensive experience in the mountains and avalanche terrain, we highly recommend to always travel through the backcountry with an IFMJ guide. In the next episode, we'll be talking about avalanche safety and explain the beacon into detail. See you!